birth of the nation. Well, let me say this, and I hope it isn't controversial, but very few people in 1961 expected that Jamaica was going to be independent in 1962. It was not on the cards. We weren't talking about that. The issues at the time were whether we would have a more advanced or less advanced constitution within the Federation of the West Indies. That was the issue. The first sort of major setback that that movement had was the result of mission from the British government to the Caribbean to choose the federal capital. Uh, as I understand it, they came thinking that they had the right to uh, name the capital, but in fact it was a recommendation that was to be made to the Foreign Office who would recommend that to us. The number one recommendation was Bridgetown Barbados. The number two was Port of Spain, Trinidad, and number three was Kingston, Jamaica. Now, you could have knocked anybody down in Jamaica with a feather. Because our view of ourselves is that if you're going to look in the Caribbean to do anything too serious, uh, obviously Jamaica is very good to have it. Uh, it wasn't just that. The, the Premier of Jamaica, uh, Mr. John Manley, had offered Mona Commons uh, to be the federal capital, which was right beside the University of the West Indies. And it, it was on this a beautiful site. So how they could choose uh, Bridgetown Barbados was beyond us. It was completely, uh, the, 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 the recommendation was regarded as a stupidity and it, it united us against the British because they said that the Barbadians are basically a black English people, so that's the reason why they like uh, Barbados. But we're not going here. And they chose uh, Shalaramas in Trinidad. So that, however, was a problem because Jamaicans were not prepared to bow as it was to uh, Trinidad, which we, we people of here felt that that's what we do, what we want to be doing. Because we were uh, set that we would have the capital here and so on. So that became a, a, a significant issue and it had a spend of the fall out. The politics were not going any differently. In 1958, there had been a federal election, and the way the federal elections went was they were won by the West Indies Federal Labour Party, of which the president was Grantley Adams, and the vice presidents were leaders of the various territories, so that uh, Norman Mandel was a vice president, Eric Williams was a vice president, uh, as the Bird was a vice president, and so on, the members. The WIFLP. Um, Mr. Adams, that they made the president, therefore became the premier designate of. Well, he actually was president of the West Indies, actually. I have seen his tombstone. It says president of the West Indies. Um, and he was a, a difficult man. He came to Jamaica on a mission and the troublemaking journalists asked him whether, with all the difficulties we were having, it might be possible for him to spend money now. And after the Federation came in, to put it in, then uh, you could have retroactive legislation, uh, retroactive taxation. Um, Mr. Adams says, yes, something. You could look in. Now that was the second huge uh, big deal. Because all the chambers of commerce from the Caribbean said, but well, he's mad. Retroactive taxation means you, you put on a tax and tell him that you're going to pay for it on your earnings for the last X years. Now, no businessman 
accept that because you might have already paid that out in dividends or spent the money. Anyway, it wasn't a, 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 a thing on. And it created a huge furor as well. So we had that as a second major setback uh, to the Federation and the period. So in Jamaica, however, the West Indies Federal Labour Party had not won the 50th election. They had lost it substantially, 12 to 5. In other words, 12 Democratic Labour Party uh, candidate uh, deputies and five uh, West Indies Federal Labour Party. So that the voice of Jamaica in the Federation was the opposition voice. The 12 Jamaicans who went down there, uh, you know, feeling that they were not in because they, they were not in. Uh, the WSIP was the leader. And unfortunately for the Federation, the two men who went down there were a very, very brilliant men um, who also uh, were very skeptical about what they called quote, small island people. One of them was Robert Lightborn. That was his first political appointment. And Mr. Lightborn, we added it up, is the, the greatest minister of industry and commerce that the country has had. Maybe the whole third world has ever had. The amount of factories that he brought into the region was something else again. And at the time he was the politician, he went in, that was his first foreign to politics. And he went down there expecting that they would ask him how these things are done. And he would advise them, as much as he had time, to how you industrialize the country. Found himself as an opposition person, and anything he said, they didn't accept because that's what happens to oppositions. The second person, however, was rather more dangerous. His name was Morris Cargill, a satirist uh, of the highest order, and one of these people who makes trouble for the sake of making trouble. And, uh, you know, just had fun. Uh, a wealthy man from St. Mary, Bernard of and so on. Uh, he wrote a column in Jamaica, uh, and the column had everything funny and negative about the Federation. It was the best red column in the country. And so the people were simply laughing at everything that they did in Port of Spain, even though, I mean, from reading the, the minutes and so on, they did tend to be a little uh, difficult. The 10 territories that made up the Federation, the largest number were the small islands, no, sorry, were the east, the Leeward and Greenwood Islands. One was supposed to use the term small. Um, <laughs> you know, it doesn't have a I don't know what it did. But the, the Leewards and Greenwoods um, had felt, in fact, they were classified as the least developed, the less developed territories. And we still have that, the more developed and the less developed. And, and they felt that now that there was a federation, it was time for them to get some factories, time for them to get more schools, time to get this, time, time to get that. On the other hand, the other territories were developing countries, we saw it as a time that we should take off. So there was an unholy difficulty over where anything that was to happen uh, should happen. And that spilled over into the psyche of the Jamaican people. Now, in the middle of that, uh, not in the middle of that, Mr. Lightman got upset at something and he came home, resigned as the MP for uh, St. Thomas, and came home. And uh, in a month, that meant there was to be a by election. And Bustamante refused to put up anybody at the end of the election on grounds that we were thinking again about federation. And then after that, uh, the Secretary of the Labour Party, Mr. D.C. Tavares, uh, called upon the government to have a referendum. It was the first time the word referendum was being used uh, as any sort of option in the entire British government. 
where the virus got that one from, uh, nobody knows. It has been used a referenda in some parts of Asia, not something that the British government had had again before. Uh, the government was fairly salmon about its position because in 1959 it had won a general election, fairly cantering hope, not under pressure. However, the, the uh, times had changed and the referendum showed a significant number of people, I think the majority was something like 150,000 were at the majority with the plurality uh, that were against the referendum. Uh, and therefore, that was what people were thinking about, is referendum politics and politics of um, how you get things sorted out. We have made a commitment to that side. <coughs> All of you are supposed to know and that if Jamaica left the Federation, it didn't mean the Federation had to be destroyed because there were ter 10 characters and if you, you, the other nine could have gone ahead um, substantially. However, uh, Dr. Eric Williams, Oxford Scholar, uh, having been asked um, what, uh, whether he would be the person that would be stepping up uh, to take a uh, place uh, more active now that the Jamaicans were out, he gave a beautiful formula. One uh, from ten that uh, means zero. And uh, 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 a simple joke, but it was taken seriously by everybody. And uh, on that ground, uh, Jamaica wrote the Secretary of the Secretary of and said, as you know, we have left the Federation so on, and the other territories did the same. So but that was the that was the move. However, it had this spin over that since we had left, we had had the power to tell Britain, take your federation and whatever. Um, it gave a feeling of, hey, we can do something. I mean, do the Princess time to go away and they have got to go away. And Jamaica developed a sense of uh, manhood, if you want to the sense instead. A sense of adulthood, uh, I suppose, might be better. Um, we felt that we had uh, done it on our own. This was what we wanted. And we had been on a tremendous uh, uh, path of uh, investment. The bauxite and aluminum industry was booming. Our tourism had started uh, to pick up. Uh, we were doing, in those days, uh, 400, 300,000 tons of sugar, uh, bananas. We were doing over 100,000 tons. So we, we felt that we were all set and ready to go. And uh, I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs>